Test 3 This is the IELTS listening test. You will hear a number of different recordings and you will have to answer questions on what you hear. There will be time for you to read the instructions and questions and you will have a chance to check your work. All the recordings will be played once only. The test is in four parts. At the end of the test, you will be given 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet. Now turn to part one. Part one. You will hear a woman who works at an employment agency talking to a man about jobs he could apply for. First, you have some time to look at questions one to five. Now listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 5. Good morning. Thanks for coming in to see us here at the agency, Joe. I'm one of the agency representatives and my name's Sally Baker. Hi, Sally. I think we spoke on the phone, didn't we? That's right, we did. So, thank you for sending in your CV. We've had quite a careful look at it and I think we have two jobs that might be suitable for you. OK. The first one is in a company based in North London. They're looking for an administrative assistant. OK. What sort of company is it? Uh, they're called Home Solutions and they design and make furniture. Oh, I don't know much about that, but it sounds interesting. Yes, well, as I said, they want someone in their office and looking at your past experience, it does look as if you fit quite a few of the requirements. So, on your CV, it appears you've done some data entry? Yes. So, that's one skill they want. Then they expect the person they appoint to attend meetings and take notes there. OK. I've done that before, yes. And you need to be able to cope with general admin. Filing and keeping records and so on. But that should be OK. And in my last job, I also had to manage the diary. Excellent. That's something they want here, too. I'd suggest you add it to your CV. I don't think you mentioned that, did you? No. So, as far as the requirements go, they want good computer skills, of course, and they particularly mention spreadsheets. That should be fine. And interpersonal skills, which would be something they'd check with your references. I think that should be OK, yes. Hmm. Then they mention that they want someone who is careful and takes care with details. Just looking at your CV, I'd say you're probably all right there. I think so, yes. Do they want any special experience? I think they wanted some experience of teleconferencing. Oh, I've got three years' experience of that. Uh-huh. Let's see. Yes, good. In fact, they're only asking for at least one year, so that's great. So is that something that might interest you? It is, yes. The only thing is, you said they were in North London, so it would be quite a long commute for me. OK. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 6 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 6 to 10. So the second position might suit you better as far as the location goes. Uh, that's for a warehouse assistant and that's in South London. Yes, that would be a lot closer. And you've worked in a warehouse before, haven't you? Yes. So as far as the responsibilities for this position go, they want someone who could manage the stock, obviously, 
and also deliveries. That should be OK. You've got to keep track of stuff, but I've always been quite good with numbers. Good. That's their first requirement. And they want someone who's computer literate, which we know you are. Sure. Then they mention organisational skills. They want someone who's well organised. Yes, I think I am. And tidy? Yes. They go together, really, don't they? Sure. Then the usual stuff. They want someone who can communicate well, both orally and in writing. OK. And for the last warehouse job I had, one of the things I enjoyed most was being part of a team. I found that was really essential for the job. Excellent. Yes, they do mention that they want someone who's used to that, yes. Now, when you were working in a warehouse last time, what sorts of items were you dealing with? It was mostly bathroom and kitchen equipment, sinks and stoves and fridges. So you're OK moving heavy things? Sure. I'm quite strong and I've had the training. Good. Now, as far as experience goes, they mention they want someone with a licence and that you have experience of driving in London so you can cope with the traffic and so on. Yes, no problem. And you've got experience of warehouse work. And the final thing they mention is customer service. I think looking at your CV, you're OK there. Right. So what about pay? Can you tell me a bit more about that, please? That is the end of part one. You now have one minute to check your answers to part one. Part 2. You will hear a woman called Alice Riches talking on the radio about a scheme which involves closing streets to traffic to allow children to play. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 16. Now listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 16. My guest on the show today is Alice Riches, who started the street play scheme where she lives in Beechwood Road. For those of you that don't already know, street play involves local residents closing off their street for a few hours so that children have a chance to play in the street safely. She started it in her own street, Beechwood Road, and the idea caught on, and there are now street play schemes all over the city. So, when did you actually start the scheme, Alice? Well, I first had the idea when my oldest child was still a toddler, so that's about ooh, six years ago now, but it took at least two years of campaigning before we were actually able to make it happen. So, the scheme's been up and running for three years now. We'd love to be able to close our road for longer, for the whole weekend, from Saturday morning until Sunday evening, for example. At the moment, it's just once a week, 
But when we started, it was only once a month. But we're working on it. So what actually happens when Beechwood Road is closed? We have volunteer wardens, mostly parents, but some elderly residents too, who block off our road at either end. The council have provided special signs, but there's always a volunteer there to explain what's happening to any motorists. Generally, they're fine about it. We've only had to get the police involved once or twice. Now, I should explain that the road isn't completely closed to cars, but only residents' cars are allowed. If people really need to get in or out of Beechwood Road, it's not a problem as long as they drive at under 20 kilometres per hour. But most people just decide not to use their cars during this time, or they park in another street. The wardens are only there to stop through traffic. So can anyone apply to get involved in street play? Absolutely. We want to include all kids in the city, especially those who live on busy roads. It's here that demand is greatest. Obviously, there isn't such demand in wealthier areas where the children have access to parks or large gardens, or in the suburbs where there are usually more places for children to play outside. I'd recommend that anyone listening who likes the idea should just give it a go. We've been surprised by the positive reaction of residents all over the city. And that's not just parents. There are always a few who complain, but they're a tiny minority. On the whole, everyone is very supportive and say they're very happy to see children out on the street, even if it does get quite noisy. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 17 to 20. That is the end of the listening test. In the IELTS test, you would now have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet.